Hi YouTube. I'm getting my video done as early as I can today. My uploading has been just difficult. I don't know why, but um, even my internet shut off and I had to go back in and resume the upload. Um, like, uh, YouTube just psh, fell out from beneath the whole thing yesterday. So, um, yeah, I... So anyway, here I am earlier than usual. Yeah, um, I, I shared a video yesterday of Awaken with JP, or JP Reacts, that's what it was, I'm pretty sure. He w shared uh, some, well, a news clip from Edgewater, Illinois, where they are, the whole school board voted. Can you imagine adults voting for teenage people? Um, you know, the two different genders in the same bathroom with each other. I mean, even like at a high school dance, there's chaperones to keep the children safe. I mean, yeah. It sounds a bit old-fashioned when you think chaperone. It's an excellent idea for keeping your children safe. Can you imagine if you're a girl and um, you have your period and maybe you've made a mess of your genes or depending on how hard you've bled or whatever and having to go in the same restroom with your peers um, boys and girls, or a boy with diarrhea or constipation or sick to their stomach. These children do not need to see the same sex going through their, or I mean, different, different genders going through personal things in a bathroom. I, I, these parents that voted this in to save money for their school system, they're really off base with taking care of their children. And I thought I'd try and alert more people to what may be coming to your school system. If it's done, um, Illinois is like one of the bread belt states in the United States, you think, um, you know, homemade apple pies and cornfields and not anymore. You know, what's going to be going on? I mean, nothing like giving these children a private spot to be alone together, you know. And what, I mean, how could you secure any kind of a stall in a bathroom with no cracks or no, like nobody can climb over the top or nobody can view underneath or it's just impossible. There's no way, um, like a little girl wouldn't be able to go in the restroom and wash like her, you, you know what I mean? Um, it's, it's, I, I'm almost speechless with this one. Um, I knew this type of thing was going to be coming because the degradation of taking God out of the picture and whether we're saying God, morality, values, keeping our children safe, however you want to word it, it's a danger. I, I almost would bet most people would agree, and whoever is on the school board in that community, I'm glad I don't know any of them. Maybe I do, but I hope I don't, you know. So, hope you're all doing well um, this Easter weekend, I do believe. If I'm not, or is it next week? I don't know. I'm I'm lost on that. I really don't keep track of, and observant 
of the holidays, scriptorial holidays, don't really mean much to me anymore. Um, it doesn't mean that the birth of Christ or the resurrection doesn't apply in my life. It's just that the dates and all that. I don't, I don't um, pay homage to what some book of people have written and ha are going by. I don't, I think you know what I mean. I'm not saying I don't obey the commandments or anything like that. That's not what I'm trying to say here. But. Yeah. Well, I made such a good supper last night. It was Swedish meatballs, if you're not familiar, in like white gravy on mashed potatoes with um, Brussels sprouts that I cleaned them up and halved them and I parboiled them a little bit and then put them in the oven with a little butter on them for a while to roast them a tiny bit and just kept them real bright green because if you get them where they're like pale green, then they're kind of mushy and they're not as good. You got to get them just right. And they were, they were wonderful. So, yeah, I loved it. It's good supper. Yeah. So, but yeah, I'm, I'm concerned. I mean, I would be flipping out. My kids would be out of that school system. Um, I took one of my kids out of the school system. Um, they were trying to reward him for bad behavior and uh, make it, like, normalize it where he had ADHD. So, has. So if he was being disruptive in the classroom, like he'd take his pencil and drum it on the table. So if he was doing something like that, it would disrupt the whole classroom. He'd have to go out, like in a timeout situation. He had uh, special education teachers helping him with that within the school system in elementary school. And these people, if he was good, he would get like, they wanted to take him, like, to McDonald's or something and buy him, like, a hamburger uh, shake and fries or something on Friday out of the school system's money. I suggested no. Um, if he kept peaceful within the classroom... Why don't you take that same amount of money and buy some like juice and some popcorn for the whole classroom? And then he'd be more like the hero. Gee, if he could let everybody study and learn and keep his big mouth shut or whatever, then the whole class would benefit. I wasn't going along with rewarding a disruptive child and not giving any gratitude towards the kids that were good every day. It's like, no, I'm not. You are not taking my child to McDonald's and rewarding him if his behavior is good. He's just either going to be good or whatever. They didn't want to go along with a lot of what I thought as his parent. And that was just one incident. So I wrote an article about their being nonchalant in their sexual ways and the way they were teaching my kid in high school. My other son, um, Talk, talk about misplaced sexuality and warped thinking when you're teaching children. And how can you keep your child safe from teachers that are predators? You know, 
So yeah, I had I literally pulled my son out of school and put him in a private school. You know, first I homeschooled him for a while, but then I knew that he needed social interaction, so I found him a better place. They did things like in the new place, um, taught him how to garden, grow things, you know, that type of thing. So he brought me home. Uh, it did die, unfortunately. It was a baby redwood tree, so it didn't make it. So, yeah, it's like when our place was, um, the land was almost barren, and we built it up with uh, soil and manures and landscaping and planting thousands of bushes and hundreds, if not thousands, of trees. I lost count. We, we um, not all of them make it wherever you put them. Sometimes they don't adapt to wherever you want to put your plant, you know, that type of thing. So it's like, um, it's like, uh, I don't know. You never know. You never know. But like if you put a garden on the edge of your property or out in the middle or you never know what's going to make it wherever you put it is what I'm saying. So the same with trees. So we had many make it, many die, you know. It's like I had this bleeding heart bush. <clears throat> and it was doing really good and I had to move it. Then I had to move it one more time and it didn't make it where I put it. So, never know. <laughs> and then you'll have the weirdest things like Things will just grow like crazy in a spot and try and devour the land, like take it over, you know, that type of thing. So I have this really low-growing plant called Snow on the Mountain, and it's sort of invasive. And you have to be careful where you plant certain things, you know, so it doesn't choke out other things, that type of thing. So, yeah. We need to really choke out these adults that are not caring about the children. For money's sake, they're going to save money on a bathroom by putting the boys and girls in the same restroom. That's it. For some kids, if they've been like maybe sexually abused or something, I could see that they would maybe even force forfeit even going in the restroom what's this gonna do you know really I don't know how you were when you were a child but I know that I should have been watched a bunch of times better than I was how about you you know it's hard for parents to keep a handle on what their children are doing under normal circumstances let alone these abnormal ones that they're instilling. You know, I just thought it was important to talk about, make people aware that to save money, they're putting children in danger. You know, oh, forget about teen pregnancy because we always have abortions, right? So that doesn't matter. That, that part's covered. Or the day after pill or whatever. I ran across, a, I'm going to pull up his name here for you in a moment. Um, really interesting because a lot of people don't believe that witchcraft is true or that they can actually do anything to you. Um, yes and no, it depends, are you aware? if something's being done to you, but I ran across this Abendigo Loofly, Luf, um, gee, I'm going to click on it. I, I, it's a different name. I mean, I know the name Abendigo, which is, um, first human being that's alive that I've ever heard the name 
Abednego. Let me see if I can get his last name here. Then I'll tell you what it's all about. Lufile. Abednego Lufile, I do believe is his name. Spelt um, L-U-F-I-L-E. His last name. So, he had shared a clip about a woman named Erica. She's an ex-witch. And she explains how she trapped souls through quarrels. And he was talking about the importance of not going to bed at night and being angry. Or, you know, don't let the sun go down on your anger type of thing that it says in the scriptures. And that's true. That's something my grandfather always taught me. And, and I'm, I'm baited quite often into those type, types of things. It could be through the most innocent conversation, then all of a sudden um, it's manipulated and orchestrated to frustrate me into... And especially if it's concerning, like, um, world views, different things um, that will be used against me, like um, children dying or something, little, little trigger things that will just totally be, fry me out because I know that these things are being said to me intentionally to try and bait me into that lower vibration is what I try and stay away from. It's like... Um, you saw the cup of coffee Doug walking in yesterday was going to come in and try and um, put his energy into me before I was able to make a video. But it didn't work out because I was making one whether or not he was here. And um, I've been doing that. Otherwise, I wouldn't even be on here. So, um, But that's how it starts. Um, I do not go where he is. I'll go in there briefly and say something if we have to communicate about something. But I don't go to hold a conversation. I don't try to teach really anybody around me anymore because um, they can be used too easily against me by the dark force, so. I had a moth flying around me. Huh. My cat will probably get it. So yeah, you. I really don't usually go to bed. I don't remember <coughs> actually being angry and falling asleep for a very long time. I do, uh... <clears throat> I mean, if I'm, I have to talk about things and discuss things that people are trying to manipulate, like whole textbooks full of psychopaths that are trying to normalize things that are not acceptable um, in a healthy society, you know, uh, I have to point it out. And I have a tendency to swear about it. I'm not excusing it. I'm trying to work on that a little more. I think you could see maybe, maybe not. I'm not always the best at that. I do get really pissed off. But it does take a lot. That's still no excuse. I, I feel it's the grace of God that led me to this um, young man this morning, not so much as for the message for me about the witchcraft, because I'm fully aware of what they try to do. I've discussed it before on here, of how Doug would say, you know, like, uh, you're getting angry, and that's what they want, and I go, who's they? You're the one that's doing this, you know? So... But it isn't just like once a week or even sometimes not even once a day. It's several times and all the time from 
many, many people. So it's not, it's not like I'm just jumping the gun with my anger because um, that's my typical mode of operation because it's really not, you know. But that would be hard to, that would be a hard thing to show um, the depth of my personality based on my reaction to the amount of what I've been through with all this like that concerning witchcraft. And if you're new here, I was adopted by a Jesuit mason married to an Eastern star witchcraft wizard, whatever. And they had always tried to manipulate and um, instill weird things in me that God always kept me safe from, is one way I could put it. So, um, growing up in turmoil and weirdness like that for me uh, to kind of give me deep insight to how the dark force works even through people that we're close to, you know. It's like this uh, Abendigo was talking how he has aunts and uncles that are actually witches and warlocks. And I believe him. I know these things are real, that people actually practice ritualistic and Satanistic things towards other people for the dark force, for their master, you know. And yeah, arguments are a big one because if they can get you to fight, it's like uh, probably about... Maybe about a year ago, I was in fear of my life because of the, it's, it was getting physical. See, it's not just emotional attacks or different things. These things actually get physical towards me that I can't prove. I've told you different things through my videos of ways that these things happen to me, and I was afraid that if I was defending myself and it's like if somebody starts a fight with you and you can't prove you were defending yourself, you could be in danger, you know? And that's how they set you up to do that type of thing, you know? So I really do have to be careful. I don't know what parents are going to do out there with all this. I would assume that there will be plenty of people taking their children out of that school system with the same sex or different gender bathrooms. That's, that's terrible. Like one time I had on a pair of white jeans and I bled through them. I went to the nurse's office and I got a pass to go home and I tied my jacket around my waist. I walked home. I didn't want to get on the public bus. So, I mean, something like that, if that happens and there's boys around in there, can you imagine how horrible that's going to be for young ladies not hose bags if you're if you have the hose bag attitude and these types of things don't bother you then I'm not talking to you anyway if you're raising your children that this isn't a big deal in society that they're trying to merge male and female in every aspect so women and children are no longer safe I'm not talking to you at all. You're brain dead. Your, your cup is so full of what you believe, there's no room for the truth of it all. It's like these professors of psychology. 
their cups are so full with what they have within their minds that and what they've learned out of their textbooks as their examples that a mom like me that has also studied psychology and worked in that field wouldn't even have the words to be able to put any words into their cup because their brain is so full of what they assume is the accurate and healthy um let me see the way I'm searching for um, the healthy aspect. It's like something yesterday, too. I was trying to search for a word to word it the right way. I think you get what I'm saying. If they're so full of what they already think they know, there's nothing I can say to them that's going to open their mind, you know, because their mind is so full already there's no room in their cup for anything else you know it's really hard to how do you explain to somebody that uh, say if they don't even have children and they would be able to psychoanalyze you and your children based on what they've learned out of books and everybody in that situation is an individual there's no way that they could um, make a pattern on a human mind a heart or a soul just exclusively for like a like a textbook reasoning for I don't know I think you get what I'm saying it's uh, there I'm starting I got a little bit of a headache <laughs> yeah still that cold lingering on here a little bit so but I think you get what I'm saying it's just really hard to I I don't think that I can explain my position to say like a professor of psychology um, based on what he's been trained and through through his training he's manipulating other people to believe the same thing whether it's right or wrong I guess is what I'm trying to say and that's what's going on in this world these these so-called leaders out there have um, been programmed with manipulation tactics that really break down social values, moral values within communities. It's a fact. You can't normalize things that are going to harm the structure of what is good and and say we can't give it a pass that this is normal and we're just going to go along with it people need to stand up and speak out about it that's the only way it's going to change you know yeah i've been to school board meetings they didn't like me very well but there i was not just parent teacher i'm talking school board I've actually talked to the head of the state, the board of directors in my state when my kids were going to school. I take this all very serious, you know, just like I wrote my state legislator, the secretary of state, and got no reply concerning adopted children that are sent out to other countries and ones that are in um, situations that they're not checked up on after they're put into a home. I was sold twice. Can you imagine that? As a baby, two weeks and then a few months old after that. 
twice, two different families, you know, never checked on again, bye, we got our money, we're happy. Just things that are going on in our society that need to have a little more um, looking into by people. Uh, if your cup isn't too full, if you can open your mind and understand that you are under attack, your children are under attack, the next generations are under attack right now by maybe even well-meaning people. that are lacking common sense. They're lacking values and it's going to reflect on the next generations because of it. Huh. I tell you, I would be flipping out if they wanted my teenage boys to be in the same restroom with teenage girls. I'd be fucking Flip it out with that. So, big time. It's it's pretty important to understand the different tactics of I and I tell people if you read about Marxism or um, the social engineering that's going on that started, and if you read the blueprint, Mein Kampf. Hitler's playbook of how to destroy a society. Just just look into that book or or look up a video on it and just listen to some of the aspects of what's going on in our society right now and you will see the gender confusion, the um, uh, degradation of moral values as far as genders and, um, or did I say that, and uh, child predation, like hurting kids, that different things that they want to make acceptable. And you can see it happening in increments. They can't just throw it all on you like, here's the Noahide laws. Now let me marry your four-year-old son if I'm a 70-year-old man. It doesn't matter because this is our laws and you are not a real human being in the eyes of the controllers. You know, that's what's going on. You know, you are a less lesser human being in their eyes. In their eyes. In my eyes, you're precious from God. And I need to tell you about this to warn you so you can warn your children so they don't grow up stupid like a bunch of them are right now, you know. So. How many times if you had had a good parent that had chaperoned you, like maybe on a first date or whatever, that they could have saved you a lot of heartache just by keeping you safe as their child. Because that's what good parents do. If you don't watch your kids, who's going to? If you don't take care of them, who's going to? You could say, like Hillary Clinton, it takes a village. Well, we don't live in Africa, honey. And we don't work like a village. We work like a machine, a part of the dark cabal in my country. So, and like I always said when my kids were little, you keep your village away from my children. Because I had a first lady in my life of the United States of America that allowed her husband to totally demean and humiliate her 
by having sex with a girl in the White House under his desk with a cigar, and this stupid creature kept him as a husband? That's not a good example. She didn't say a word against him, not, not to defend every woman and child and person out in the United States as a decent woman would. These women stand beside these scummy men. Why? What's, what's it doing for everybody? Nothing. Yeah, it's not a good good example of leadership. That's my my outlook on it all. So. Well, I'm going to get this uploaded. I just wanted to warn everybody, your children, their children, our children, grandchildren, they're in danger in so many ways. It's not even a joke and They're taking God out of the picture at every turn. What's it going to be? It's like taking the woman out of the family. If you don't have that nurturing, loving instinct within that family, what do you have left? I just froze, I think. Maybe it won't show up on there. But it's all very real what they're doing and it's intentional but we can stop this stuff I know a lot of what I've said and other people feel the same way we have put a dent in their plans and we can't back down we are winning this war don't back down stand up and raise your voices not screaming but make yourself heard within your communities let them know this is not going to go by it's not going to fly by on your watch so okay everybody peace and love from pine city minnesota usa have a good night or day wherever you're at